This is Lorena Mora Maury for Mujer Latina Today. We have the pleasure here to interview from San Francisco, San Francisco. my favorite city, California, Diana Campomor. Bienvenida. Diana, a mujer latina today. Gracias, Lorena. It's so good to be with you. you have, well, everyone has a story, so we would like to, to know a little bit about your story. Diana, que ha trabajado por la comunidad. Let's, tell us, let's talk about you a little bit, your background. And, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I want to tell you a story. You know, when I was a little girl in Cuba, I remember one time that for Christmas, my parents took us to the family farm, which was in one of the provinces, in one of the rural areas in Cuba. And when I was there, I played with the children of the campesinos. Those were the children that were around the farm. And when I came back for El Dia de los Reyes Magos, you know, the day that generally in Latin America, children receive gifts, I remember writing um, a letter to the Reyes Magos, and I remember writing, you know, a letter of all the gifts that I wanted to receive. And then I wrote another letter, and I wrote a letter for those other children, because I wanted them to receive presents from Los Reyes Magos as well. And so the following day, the Reyes Magos left me presents, and I asked my parents, I said, you know, are the Reyes Magos also leaving the presents for, you know, the children in the farm? And, and my mother, in a moment of truth, to her credit, said to me, you know, most likely not, because not all children get presents. And so, you know, the reason I bring that story up is because in a way what I have been doing in my career is writing letters to Los Reyes Magos in the United States, foundations that give grants, asking that they support, that they support HIP, but also that they support all of those who don't, you know, who are outside of the network, who are out of the way, who are small but powerful and growing, who are, um, you know, who are an essential part of the of the new America. And so what Hispanics in Philanthropy is, is we are a, a network of grant makers, uh, we are a grantor, and we're an advocacy organization. What do we advocate? We advocate for the smartest investment that philanthropy can make right now. And that is in Latino communities and specifically in small grassroots organizations that are really serving our community, that are creating jobs, that you know are creating social capital. Those are the best organizations to support. And 95% of them don't even have a chance at that. Well, we have see, I see those organizations here changing community, changing life, changing families so we can create this uh, change around us. But tell us about, you have given work in this organization for many years. Yeah. The, if you look back and you think about the best or one of the best uh, uh, projects that the organization help uh, with the funds. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, um, so around 15 years ago, uh, we started a project called the Funders Collaborative. And the reason why it's a collaborative is because there are several funders that get together and they, uh, they match each other. In other words, you know, I put a dollar, you put a dollar. There's power in that. Not only because now we have two dollars, but because there's social capital. It's your intention as well as my intention. So we started a funders collaborative and right around, you know, the uh, 1999, 2000, the market went up. So foundations had more money and we were able to start programs in 15 different sites in California, which is, you know, where our headquarters are at, um, in, you know, in the Midwest, um, in New England, in Southern Florida, in Santo Domingo, in Argentina, Mexico, a number of places. So let me give you an example of an organization that I think, you know, 
benefited from the funders collaborative. Did you say 40 million? And okay, so 40 million, it's a lot of money. Lot of but money. what did it do? What did it do? Let me give you one example. It's an example that I often use. Um, it's a group called Frente Indígena Oaxaqueño Binacional. And it's a, an organization that when we when we found them and they found us, um, they had a budget of less than $10,000. They were working primarily with Mixteca Indians, um, undocumented, of course, you know, who were coming to California to work uh, in la agricultura. Um, they were campesinos in la Mixteca, in Oaxaca. And so, um, you know, they were coming here and many of them were getting sick. They had no access uh, to health care. Um, there was, uh, you know, very little information about how to deal with La Migra, you know, when they were here and so on. And so one of the young men in the, um, in the group started this group. Obviously, you know, he's, he's a leader. You know, he said, we can do something about this. And so they came to see us. And we helped them to put together a strategic plan. We gave them a grant, and then we also introduced them to other organizations. So fast forward to today, that organization, you know, has stabilized at a budget of about 600000 They have offices both in the Central Valley, in California, and Fresno, and Modesto, and wow. places like that, but also in Oaxaca, where they're from because they're binacional, their families are binacionales, you know? And um, the individual uh, who led the effort, uh, Rufino Dominguez, uh, he won a Ford Foundation Fellowship. Uh, the organization now has ties to several national foundations. Um, and Rufino himself has gone back to his home community, and he is the minister in charge of immigration in the government, the state government of Oaxaca. So wow. I think that is the story of what can happen when we all help each other. You know, at the end of the day, Lorena, it's not about the money. Listen, I know we all need money. All of us need money. But... It's more than that. The social capital is even more important. Our, you know, our intention, our generosity is even more important. And so I think the example of this organization is an example of not just getting grants, but people getting together and saying, what can we do to help ourselves? What can, what do we need, what do we need? How do we ask for it? How do we find others that come to our assistance in the same way that we support them? Very interesting. Des redescubriendo el liderazgo que ellos tienen, rediscovering yeah. the leadership that they have, but also sure. they have the tools, the connection. But, you know, you have learned a lot. But uh, now let's talk about the new project, the new initiative, the HYPE give because it's crowdfunding and we talk about crowdfunding but this is for us the latinos that maybe we don't know too much about could you please explain to us about why uh, this new uh, in the new initiative but how it works and of course um technology is a powerful tool and many of us use technology or uh, already um you know uh, use of uh, cellular phones by Latinos is higher than many communities. So we know we use this. Now, the question for HIP was, how do we use technology to help Latino organizations to be better fundraisers and to broaden the number of donors? Yes, there's the big Reyes Magos, you know, there's the, you know, Ford and Gates and Kellogg's and others. But each one of us is a Reyes Mago. You, Lorena, are a rey, un rey, una reina maga. Y yo también, y muchos otros. Mm -hmm. So each one of us, you know, makes contributions. And so we wanted to provide the same opportunity to our community 
you know, to, you know, through a, a website, hipgive.org, you know, I'll say it again, hipgive.org, you can look at a catalog of organizations and you can find common cause with others. You know, you can look at organizations that and invest, make a smart investment in Latino nonprofits. If, you know, if you're in the Midwest, it could be organizations in the Midwest or they could be in the Southwest, or in fact, they could be, they could be in Mexico. We have this time two organizations um, in Mexico. You know, here's, here's the thing. You know, when we do that, okay, you know, we find connections and partnerships that enrich all of us. And we believe, you know, there's a lot of talk around immigration reform and, you know, Latinos coming here to take jobs and, you know, to take benefits from the government. We know that's not true. We know it's the opposite. We know that we are givers. We are givers of economic prosperity. We are givers of social capital. We are givers of cultural and intellectual uh, capital. And we're also givers of family values, spiritual values, all of that. So this platform, hipgive.org, you know, is an opportunity for all of us to prove that, you know, whether it's $5 or $1,000, we are all givers. And the reason why mm-hmm. hipgive.org is, it says, you know, smart investments in Latino, Latinos in the Americas. The reason why it's smart investments is because HIP is an organization of grant makers. And what we have done is we have curated a list, a list that provides you, the donor, whether again, whether it's $5 or $1,000, it provides you the confidence that these are organizations that have been vetted by philanthropists who have 30 years of experience in this field. And so for that reason, you know, these projects have a higher impact. But at the same time, it's your choice. It's donor's choice, you know, how you decide to serve. I love the the website. I went to the hip gift.org um, you can choose your organization and they can in espanol or in english but also it could be arts and leadership and politics and, and policy makers and i love the one of the leaderships but i think uh, uh, we can be part of that but let's talk about because you launched this website april 11 i think so there will be april 11 to two um april 16th i'm sorry uh, okay okay april 16th so there will be some time so we can help with the funds, is correct? Yes. And they will That's be matched. Right. So how many organizations is That's participating? That's right. Uh, 22 or 23 organizations, you know, uh, are a part of this first campaign. And by the way, we decided to launch in April and May because we wanted to do a special appeal around Mother's Day. Mm. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. And... You know, when Mother's Day comes around, I don't need more perfume. I don't need more More scarves. (laughs) (laughs) I don't need another scarf, you know, or or, or more, you know, more collares. But I do need to feel, you know, that I'm going to leave a better world for my children and for my grandchildren. And so... What I'm asking, you know, my kids this year is to make a donation to any of these projects on my behalf, whatever it is, $10, $15, no importa, you know. And I think that there are also a lot of mothers out there, you know, that, you know, what we really, what makes us proud is to invest in our children. And this is one way to do it. Well, I saw the picture and I thought my daughter there and I thought, oh, we need to help that organization. But um, so um, they may fit 11 and then they have certain time to raise 
10,000, 6,000, uh, $5,000, yeah. any money they can raise, and there will be your, a company match making those funds, correct? There will be, you know, that there will be some matches and some prizes that the West, the Western Union Foundation uh, has provided. So, in a, if if you, you know, raise uh, $10,000, you know, through your network and by using ours as well, you know, that is $10,000. But you also have, you know, the opportunity to win. Uh, matching prizes and uh, other kinds of things. Not to mention the fact, Lorena, that, you know, we provided a lot of technical assistance to these organizations before they came on board because we want them to do well. You know, we're not in business to make money. This is not, you know, uh, a, uh, a commercial endeavor. We're in business to do something even more important, which is, you know, to create social capital. And uh, and we want these organizations to do well. You, would you like to share another mensaje para nuestra comunidad? El mensaje es que si se puede, si se puede, power begins with ourselves. You know, there's the old adage, let there be peace in the world and let that peace begin with me. You know, let there be abundance in our lives, you know, and let that begin with us. Together, we have the wherewithal to begin our investments. And I believe, Lorena, that when we do that, others invest in us. So let's show, mm -hmm. let's show the United States, let's show the Americas that we are givers. We are givers through you know, sites like ours and many other ways that all of us um, demonstrate our generosity. You know, it makes you feel good when you do it. If right now, if right now, just think about this. Soon as you see this, you know, go on hipgive.org and make a contribution. After you finish, see how you feel. And if you feel good, there's a reason for that, and that's because you've done good. So I would say, you know, let's use the power, you know, of our intention and our dollars to invest in ourselves, because together we can do it. We can grow. Yeah, and, and we will be happy to be part of the click and donate campaign, because definitely it, it will nos beneficia a todos. It's a It's for that all. See, sí. bueno, um, something else that you would like to share with us to the community aquí, aquí in, in Midwest. Somos los Reyes Magos que estábamos esperando. Somos nosotros, tú Lorena y yo y todos nosotros. See, sí. and, and are you having some plans for another uh, pro, um, otro programa de estos, another program for the near future? Yes, we are uh, the keep hip.org is just in the testing phase so this is our first campaign and there will be a number of other campaigns that we will be announcing um, in the next uh, several months well I will so hope I can interview important. you again for the next campaigns because definitely es eh, eh, importante que nuestra comunidad knows about this and we're changing back and forth in español in English but that's our life Muchísimas yeah, gracias, yeah. gracias, Diana. Encantada, Lorena. Muchas gracias. No, gracias, gracias a ti. A